Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series in bioenergy. So, last class we were talking about the gasifier designs and we have talked about the two different kind of fixed bed gasifiers. So, the broadly I mean there are two broadly used uh, gasifiers and there is a third type which is not very commonly used. Okay. So, today what we will do we have talked about the fixed bed gasifiers, today we will be talking about the fluidized bed gasifiers. As the name indicates, it is a form of gasifiers or a design of gasifier where there is a opportunity of lot of mixing between the reactants, between the biomass material and the air oxygen mixture which is coming there and this reaction is enabled in a fluidized bed a bed where it is almost like a platform where you have the reactants and the catalyst in the form of what you are what is being used to in a combust it and it is given a lot of more time. So, to start off with fluidized bed is classified into two different categories. Okay. One is called a circulating method, the other one is called a bubbling method. So, let us start off with. So, start with fluidized bed gasification, fluidized bed gasification okay. and within fluidized bed gasification we classify them into two different categories category 1 which constitute circulating fluidized bed whereas the second one is bubbling fluidized bed and the name itself is self explanatory bubbling fluidized bed that you are bubbling the fluid and you are here the ingredient gets circulated. So, in one word if you have to distinguish between fluidized bed versus if you want to do a classification with the fixed bed versus fixed bed, one of the most fundamental difference is in the case of fluidized bed, in the case of fluidized bed you have a uniform temperature distribution achieved in the gasification zone. Uniform temperature distribution in the gasifying zone, uniform temperature distribution in the gasification zone. So, if you remember when we talked about the fixed bed gasifiers, if you remember I showed you that graph that when you are introducing the biomass, the drying temperature followed by the increase in temperature from 200 degree to 400, 600 and all the way to 1000 and more than 1000 in the combustion chamber. and finally, it comes back to 200 in one case, in the other case it remain a 900 of the existing gas. So, what is happening across the chamber what you see in the case of fixed bed, what you see the temperature kind of you know varies depending on which part of it if you remember like something like this or something like this likewise. So, where your x axis is showing the T degree centigrade differences and these are the different zone. So, for example, this is where the drying is happening, this is where combustion is happening and likewise so on and so forth. Okay. 
whereas in the case of uniform temperature distribution in the case of second A the temperature is T degree centigrade it is more or less remain uniform there is hardly any difference okay and we will talk about it how such uniform temperature distribution is achieved. So, your take home message from this part is get this difference very clear in your mind how the temperature varies in both of them. Here the temperature remains very constant. So, if it is 1000 degree it will remain 1000 degree all throughout. So, in other word there is a homogeneous mixing which is feasible in the fluidized bed as compared to the circulating as compared to the fixed bed. And in the fixed bed you really have to be very careful because if you could see it here itself you are maintaining temperature at different level and that needs a lot of finer control which has to be maintained as compared to this situation where you do not have to really bother about the temperature. You really can fix it at a point and allow the reaction to you know carry over over a period of time. So, this is a very very significant and very very important uh, difference between fluidized bed as against the fixed bed. So, by definition if you have to go what we meant by the fluidized bed is basically it is achieved by is achieved by using a bed of fine grained material fine grain material into which air which is the form of fluid air is introduced and if you this definition is clear to you then you will realize that when I will do the drawing it will make sense. So, essentially fluidizing the bed material and ensure intimate mixing. As I told you there is a lot of opportunity of a very homogeneous mixing, intimate mixing of the hot bed material there are three things which are mixing here. So, here is the hot bed where the mixing is occurring hot bed material the hot combustion gas the hot combustion gas and the biomass feed. So, what is significant in this is you have to remember these three ensure intimate mixing this is very important this part what of the 1 a the hot bed material which is the platform where this reaction is happening. So, you needed a bed material something like this it is a bed on which you have the biomass coming which has to be converted and from underneath or from side or whatsoever avenue you are introducing the combustion gas. So, this is that hot combustion gas which is the second important thing okay, and the biomass feed. So, what you are allowing imagine a vessel where you are allowing all of them you are fluid fluidizing the vessel by adding air into it and you are allowing the reaction to take place at a uniform temperature and if you go back a slide back this is what is happening here. If I had to introduce you are the three component A, B and C which is. So, you have the reaction bed, bed material, you have the biomass which has to be converted into gas and you have the combustible air. So, these A, B, C what I just now put together they are there is an intimate mixing of all these things which results to the 
generation of the gas. This is the framework on which we will be talking about the two different kind of uh, fluidized bed. One the which is called the circulating one, the second one which is called the bubbling one. So, the basic logic is this. So, keep this logic in mind. Okay? So, now let us go for these two classification the circulating fluidized bed and the bubbling fluidized bed. What does that mean? So, we will follow the same uh, pattern what we did earlier. We will have the schematics of these two and then based on the schematics. So, the drawing should get embedded into your imagination. Look at this is how the reaction takes place in these kind of chambers and what is the difference. So, whenever we talk about circulating, it means some component is circulating here, circulating fluidized bed. Okay. And we talk about bubbling, it means you are bubbling something, something out of and what all, what could be the component? You have only three component and now end of the day. You have either, you have obviously the bed is fixed, you cannot really shift the bed. So, there is a bed where the reaction is happening, okay. that is a platform that you cannot shift. What all you can shift? You can shift the product out of this. So, you can either circulate some of the products which are formed here or you can bubble combustible air. Just remember what all you can move there? You cannot move the bed, bed will remain constant at one place. So, on the top of the bed you have this biomass like this, you are giving the fluidized air. So, you can either bubble it or with the product which is coming you can recirculate it and you could have a hybrid system two out of these two. Okay. So, let us get into the details of it now. Okay. So, we will start with the circulating fluidized bed. Circulating fluidized bed gasifier. Okay. So, the design if we have to show let me first of all draw the design of it that will help for the better understanding of it something like this. This is just an schematic I am not drawing by the scale. So, okay. Okay. Okay, and is another port out here, and now, so you have a from here you are putting the fuel into it, fuel and sand, which is basically forming the bed and there is a grate out here, grate and from here you are putting the fluidization medium, fluidization medium. Okay. This is where you have the bottom ash and man bed material sand, bed material mostly the sand. It is something like when I talk about sand, so all of many of you have seen when they make, make popcorn on the roadside, you all of have seen the how they make it. So, you see a big vessel there, uh, iron vessel or a metallic vessel on which they put a lot of sand, you have seen and they heat up the sand and then they put the corns into it and the corn start flopping out into forming the popcorn, exactly very similar to that. Just imagine, you see the popcorn wallas uh, who are and you will see how they are making it. So, there is a sand bed, so you have a vessel on that there is a sand bed, sand is getting warm up and you put the popcorns and then you take out the puffed corns. Okay. So, that is precisely almost very similar to that, so, if you have to make a one to one correlation what you see in your day to day life. Okay. So, this is where the bed material which is the sand which is kind of the reaction unit. 
okay. And uh, this is called the cyclone where things are been recirculated back and this is called the return leg. And there is something called a loop seal here and from here out here, there you are putting air, oxygen and steam. This is the entry port for all the three stuff. So, this is where you are having the fluidized medium moving through and most of the reactions. So, the reaction zone is out here. So, this is where the reaction is happening, okay, which I put in yellow and blue. Okay. This is where most of the reaction is taking place. Now, what is happening out here is it is so just put it down word. So, one second let me keep this in mind. So, it consists of a grate at the bottom through which the air is introduced. So, here is the grate okay, for introducing the air or in other word this grate what you see this this grate material what I am shading now is the one which is allowing the fluidized material to move through. So, this is where you are having the sand and all those things and it is the fluidic it is you are making the fluidized by introducing this whole mixture out. So, this part is all getting heated up. So, there is a uniform temperature regime which is created here. Okay. So, now what you do? So, on top of it you are having the all the biomass which has to be converted. Okay. So, above the grate is the moving bed of fine grain material. So, this is where we are talking about. So, this is the zone. Uh, let me pick up another color. So, this is the zone where we are talking about as uh, this is above the grate. Okay. Above the grate is the moving bed. You can move the bed up and down is the moving bed okay. of fine grain material of fine grained material okay, in which prepared the biomass in, is introduced in which prepared biomass is introduced. It is exactly the same analogy what I was trying to explain you. Say for example, just I am drawing it for you for your understanding. You have seen the see the seen the popcorn maker. So, you will have a vessel like this, okay, like this and on that vessel you will see a lot of sand out there. Okay. You will see a lot of sand like this on the bottom. Okay. So, what this guy will do? So, this is the sand in YOLO. So, this guy is kind of heating it up. Okay. So, this is where he is heating it, okay. getting a lot of heat. So, what will happen? The temperature of the sand is going to go up. The temperature out here increases when the temperature increases it attains a uniform temperature. So, what you are having he here is an uniform temperature and at this point you will see this guy will be introducing lot of those you know corns out here and they might make popcorns exactly similar to the analogy of popcorn making analogy what you are doing instead of corn here you are introducing the biomass. So, you have the sand or the very finely made sand on which you are introducing the corn and that is what you are flopping out. So, exactly the same thing what is happening here. Okay. So, now coming back. So, these are the two critical points what you have to keep in mind. Okay. And uh, generally the temperature which is maintained out here is approximately 700 to 900 degree centigrade and this could be controlled further. Okay. This could be controlled 
by years slash biomass ratio. You can control this temperature easily. Okay. These kind of things could handle high capacity, fairly high capacity it can handle high capacity of material. Second important thing is that this is even a day to day example you can see in the paper and pulp industry this is fairly common paper and pulp industry this is a common phenomena for gasification of the bark and other forest product where these kind of uh, circulating fluidized bed is being used and the bed material this is very important the bed material is circulated between the reaction vessel and the cyclone separator where the ash is removed and the bed material and the char is returned to the reaction vessel. Okay. So, there is one addition I wanted to do you can also circulate this bed material. Okay. So, what is happening here when this whole reaction is taking place? So, the bed material circulates like this what will the product like this comes back. So, there is a movement of the bed material which can go and come back. So, how that happens? This is very important for you to realize. So, the bed material is circulated between the reaction vessel between the reaction vessel and the cyclone okay and a cyclone separator cyclone separator. Okay. Where ash is removed, we will come back to the drawing and I will show you what does that mean remove and the bed material and char return to reaction vessel, return to a reaction vessel and this th can operate at very high pressure, there is no issue about it withstanding the pressure and because of it you can compress the gas and especially for gas turbines where you need compressed gas, you can compress the gas and especially for situation where you need for gas turbines where you need compressed gas this can come very handy where you need compressed gas okay so this method comes very handy in those situation further there are two more points what you have to uh, consider is that gas velocity decreases as gas velocity decreases arrow showing decreases and the entrained particle fall back to the fluidized bed and the entrained particles fall back to fluidized bed, fall back to fluidized bed okay. and those particles are separated from the, from the gas in a cyclone and is returned to the bottom of the bed. So, what exactly is happening for we let us see the diagram. Okay. So, here the reaction is happening all the reactions. So, the gas is about to move out along with the particulate matters out here the lighter one is getting collected like this and the heavier one again falls back and there are a lot of filters out here and it is returned back. So, what you are essentially doing in this circulating fluidized bed you are, so 
this is where the reaction vessel is. So, reaction is happening, it is going back, part of it is getting escaped and getting stored out here and part of it is coming back and again doing the reaction, again another cycle runs, again part of it going out, part of it is coming back, likewise so on and so forth. Okay. So, it is a kind of a circulating journey and out here where things are getting separated, they get separated mostly on the density gradient. So, the density the higher particles again comes back. Okay. So, this is how this whole fluidized model of a circulating fluidized bed works and the advantage is that this can work as I mentioned at a so at a very high pressure and secondly the gas velocity it decreases of the entrained particles. this is exactly what it meant by that and fall back to the fluidized bed and again the reaction continues. So, in a way in this kind of situation you are taking time for the reaction to happen over a prolonged period of prolonged cycles. That way you are making the system to utilize all the possible materials or the biomass which are present there. Okay. So, now from here with this drawing in your in front of you, we will talk about the next one which is the bubbling bed. Okay. Bubbling bed. So, in bubbling bed the only basic fundamental difference will come here this is the zone where the basic fundamental there will not be any circulation. Okay. So, let me draw the bubbling bed that will make more sense. So, the bubbling bed is essentially you have something like this, the architecture is very similar except that the connector okay. So, if you remember in the previous one and the cyclone is getting connected to the back to the vessel. So, here you have the producer gas okay. and this is where the fly ash come out, you have to collect the fly ash because that needs further treatment because that is a fairly bad pollutants. Okay. So, now if you look at this diagram, this is what is happening. Here you are introducing the fuel and sand which is making the reaction bed like here. Okay. Out here, this is the bottom ash okay. and uh, out here you are introducing the air, steam and oxygen. So, you are bubbling this part okay. and generally the temperature which is maintained out here is again in the range of 700 to 1000 degrees centigrade okay. and this is what is called the bubbling zone and this is the free board and from here you are getting the so fluidized gas. So, here you are having the tons of biomass which is on the top. Okay. So, now what is happening here is this, you are bubbling slowly and the gases which are being produced moves along with the ash and everything and out here the gas escapes like this, this is where you are collecting the gas and cylinders or whatever and the ash which is contaminated with it is rejected out. This fly ash has to be collected, you know they are used for making breaks and other things. Okay. So, this is how the basic architecture of it looks like. So, again there is a grating through which you are introducing the air and you introduce the air. So, here is the grating where you are introducing the air and you introduce the air in form of you are fluidizing it in bubbles. Okay. So, biomass basically spiralized in the hot bed forming char and gaseous compound of high molecular weight. So, what is happening out here is that there are two three processes which are happening, let us enumerate them. 
So, the biomass which is introduced there that gets pyrolyzed in the hot bed forming char plus gaseous compounds. And this char is of very high molecular weight. And this high molecular weight char is further cracks and giving product of low molecular weight MW stand for molecular weight low, low molecular weight tar compounds. Okay. This is how it works and in this situation the temperature is constant and low throughout. Okay. So, you can maintain a constant temperature out here is constant and due to automatic density separation in the bed, dense particles sink while the light particle leaves. So, what is happening out here if you see this column, this column is where there are there it almost forms a gradient. So, so, if I really magnify this column, you will look if you see this column context, this column will be more like this. So, the lighter particle will be at the top, higher than that will be underneath it, further higher will be underneath it and the heavier ones will be like this. So, these ones will be the one which will be escaping fast followed by the ones this one, then the this, this layer, then the fourth layer. So, there will be a almost like those who have studied about density gradient centrifugation, there is a density gradient. So, because of this slowly fluidizing which is coming from the bottom, let me show it in the red, okay. it creates a kind of a interesting gradient phenomena out here. The first one to get out, second one, third one, fourth one. So, it takes time, but at a uniform temperature you can really achieve this. Okay. So, this is what we talked about the basics of the two different kind of fluidized bed reactors. Okay. So, what we will do after this is that we will talk about the operation and performance of the fluidized bed reactor followed by since we have talked about the thermochemical methods. After this we will talk about the biochemical routes of gasification and then we will summarize the different uh, routes by which different kind of fuels could be developed solid, liquid, gas. Okay. But gas is preferred big time because transportation is easy and could be used in several operations much more easily as compared to the liquid or the solid fuel. Definitely solid uh, is transportation is a challenge as compared to gas. So, overall just to summarize what we have learned about the gasifiers, we have talked about the fixed bed and we have talked about the fluidized bed and the different kind of fixed bed like the updrift, downdrift and cross sectional side to side movement. And uh, then we talked about the fluidized bed where we talked about uh, the one where we have uh, bubbling, the one we are recirculating. So, again let me iterate another aspect that there is no one way really. When you have, whenever you have to pick up one particular aspect, you really have to think several times that depending on the properties of the material, what is the best you can do. So, there is no one thumb rule like you know you can it always is a function of the material what you will be using for making energy materials out of it. So, for it is always case by case, but as long as your basics are clear you really can you know work around it to figure out what is the best way to you know play the game. So, I will close in here and uh, in the next class we will talk about the pros and cons of the fluidized bed 
followed by the biochemical route of uh, transforming biomass to energy materials like gases, okay. gasification using biological route like anaerobic digestion and the ancillary processes. Thank you.